Jake Paul in his third boxing match, uh, taking on former MMA champ Ben Askren, and uh, can't wait to invite them out here on the stage. With no further ado, Jake and Ben, come on out. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Thank you everybody for coming out. Thank you guys. Hi Ben. How you doing? Well, you guys have uh, set the table for this pretty well with that video and uh, with what you've been doing beforehand. And uh, Jake, I'll start with you. Um, you've kind of indicated that at the end of the day, your boxing skills you feel are better and at, that ultimately that's the difference. No, 100%. I mean, this guy's striking is that of a grandma. Quite literally, if I put a grandma in against Jorge Masvidal, she would have lasted longer than this guy. Um, you know, he's a good athlete, they say, but April 17th, he's going to get exposed. You know, we saw Steve Cunningham earlier going up against Frank, Frank Mir, and it's a boxer versus an MMA guy. I love Frank Mir, but at the end of the day, Steve's going Steve's gonna to take care of business, and then later on in the night, same thing is going to happen. This is boxing versus MMA, and you're going to see the difference. You're going to see the difference of a, a wannabe fighter, you know, a guy who choked in the Olympics, a guy who choked in the UFC, and now a guy who's going to choke against Jake Paul. I'm going to end this guy's career as an embarrassment. Masvidal did it once, I'm about to do it again. All right, so all of that having been said, Ben, you, uh, you indicate that the difference is not about the skill, it's about the toughness. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I'd heard of Jake Paul prior to accepting this fight, but I couldn't have told you a lot about him or his brother. I knew, um, you know, he kind of came up in his brother's shadow. He was trying to fill his brother's footsteps. You know, his brother is a lot more talented, has a larger following. Those, those type of things. You, you, literally, you literally went on your Instagram and asked people oh, for, for roast. You asked people for roast on yeah, your Instagram. And, and that was the top comment was, say that his brother is better than him. Is he? You, that's like, that's like com calling Kylie Jenner, Kendall Jenner. Like, I don't know anything about them. Yeah. Anyway, it's so. Like, that, that doesn't matter. Still, still a compliment. <laughs> okay. I, I would love to be Logan. L Logan's a great kid. Both stars. Both taking over the world at a young age. Okay, so when Logan's little brother called me out, um, you know, I thought about it. Like, you, actually, you actually called me out. Let's get the facts straight. You called me out the week of the Nate Robinson fight, so continue. Yeah. Okay, so when Logan's little brother called me out the week of the Nate Robinson fight, uh, I said, sure, more than happy to, right? I like to fight him and fighting for a long time. Never boxing, but I've done wrestling, mixed martial arts, jiu-jitsu. And you know, I, th I thought, well, from his angle, what's he doing? And you know, I asked some of my kids at my academy, you know, what's this guy all about? And they said, he's a bully, he's a dick. And so I think from his angle, it was like, who, he's thinking, who's the easiest guy that I can pick that'll give some validity to my name? It's like, hmm, I'm gonna pick the guy who just had a surgery, who's retired, If I wanted to pick the, the easiest guy, I would've picked Dylan Dennis. Well, we know, Dylan, Dylan was Dennis too scared no, to sign the contract. I agree. You actually had the balls to sign the contract. So if I wanted the easiest guy, I would've picked Dylan. Jake, you did pick Dylan. We know that. I, I've already went over that. You picked Dylan. I know he wouldn't do it. But you just said I picked you. Because Dylan wouldn't say yes, dumb dumb. Well, you took it on your words, Bubba? You picked Dylan. You took it on your words, Bubba? You picked Dylan. Dylan wouldn't sign the contract. Therefore, you can't fight Dylan, so you had to pick the next person. Okay? But now, you said let, I picked let me you continue. first. You said if I, want, if I wanted the easiest person, it would have been Dylan. But you're saying I picked you as because the easiest person. Because Dylan, Dylan wouldn't sign the contract. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to for you to stop talking. Okay. So, anyways, like this is typical boy behavior, but obviously sometimes the this is the bully fucking fight the wrong game. Person. This is the fucking fight game. You you pussy ass bitch. This is the fucking fight game. Yeah, I'll bully you around just like I'm gonna bully you in the ring. Shut the fuck up. You sound like a middle schooler. Oh, he's bullying me. Shut the fuck up. Now, I was talking to your mentality. You're not gonna bully me. That's gonna ha that's not gonna happen. And you know, like Jake, if you and I ran into each other in the back alley in Las Vegas, and I wanted to right now the then. side. Do it right now then. We're right. running into each other right now. Come on. Someone's going to stop you. you got like 27 people. That's what I thought. Yeah, okay. Boot so, pain. Anyways, I would do a homicide on you if I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, All right. yeah. Well, there you are. I guess that sets the table pretty well. Bitch Let's pain. go to questions from the press on here. Right in your face, you didn't do shit. 
Jake, I guess I would ask you to clarify. I mean, why did you pick Ben? No disrespect to Ben, but I think he's the last guy we ever thought we'd see. I already laid it out to you. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. Here's what actually happened is actually after my Nate Robinson fight, there was probably 70 people calling me out wanting to fight me. And there was probably six people that it made sense to fight. Bisbing, McGregor, Diaz, Danis, Askren, some YouTubers who are popular. Uh, but I wanted to fight a real MMA fighter. When it, con when it came to signing the contract, a lot of them th didn't want to do it. And by the way, this is me coming to them with the biggest payday of their lives. This is Ben's biggest payday, payday of his life. He's publicly said that. And so when it came down to signing the, the contract, he was actually down. So that, that, that's how it happened. And this fight makes sense. This fight makes sense in, in, a, in a lot of ways. And there's a, a large majority of people who think he's going to win. And then there's the, other, there's the other half who know I'm going to win. Ben, I guess I want to ask you, when this first got announced, it seemed like kind of a fun exhibition thing for you to stay busy after your MMA career. But where does it stand now? I mean, obviously, some pretty personal words. And you know, a lot of people are looking at you as kind of this representative of the sport of MMA as well. So where does this stand? I mean, you've, you've been an athlete all your life competing at the highest level. Is this a serious competition to you, or is this a fun exhibition? I mean, I'm going to take it serious, but the highest level of competition, no, not, not even close. Um, yeah, I'm going to have fun with this. That's what I came for. Um, Jake thinks he's a high-level boxer. I think he's fairly delusional. I guess we'll find out. You, you, you will find out very quickly and in a violent fashion. And, and you will embarrass the sport of MMA. You are representing the UFC. This is personal. You know, the whole MMA community. You're trying to make me represent the sport of No, MMA you are representing UFC. the sport. Dana White is betting money on you. He, he, you know, he's trying to get trainers to actually help you train so that you can beat me. So you are representing the sport of MMA. You are an MMA fighter. Just like I'm, rep I'm representing the sport of boxing because I'm a boxer. Just like I'm representing celebrities and YouTubers because I'm a celebrity and a YouTuber. So I'm representing all of those, all of those things. So you are representing them. And you will see boxing conquer. All right, let's go out uh, for another question. Hey, Jake, it's the Schmo. Good to see you. Quick question for you. If you get through Ben Askren, do you think that's the key to getting the attention of Dana White and maybe getting a Conor McGregor fight? Or who would be next on your list if you get through Ben Askren? Schmo, my guy. Good to see you. Um, you, know, you know, I don't have to do anything to get the attention of these guys, <laughs> you know? They have to get the attention of me at this point. You know, they're talking about me more than I'm talking about them. Uh, so, you know, he's, he's one of the first fighters on the list, yeah? He's the first MMA fighter that will be taken down. I think this will make the Jake Paul versus Conor McGregor fight that will happen one day more, more intriguing, of course. But, you know, there's Diaz after this. Uh, you know, there, there's tons of people calling me out, celebrities still, athletes. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But, yeah, this, this fight uh, will, will give me a lot of, a lot of credibility. Um, you know, Ben's 19 and 2, has less losses than McGregor, two time NCAA Division I champ, Olympic wrestler. So, yeah, he, he's, a, he's a real fighter. And that's why I wanted to do this fight, is to show the world, like, yo, this real fighter is getting in with Jake Paul and he's going to get KO'd in two rounds. Now, for you, Ben, on the other side of the coin, if you get through Jake Paul, what's next in your boxing career? Do you go for the big brother, Logan Paul? Yeah, I, I mean, 2021 seems like a tremendous year to beat up the whole Paul family. <laughs> All right. Good seeing you, Schmo. Let's, uh, let's go to another question from uh, that the was press. Good. That was your first good joke of the press conference. I know you're really, you're really excited about that one. Do you smoke cigarettes or are your teeth just yellow? I'll, uh, I'll write your material if you want me to. English, please? If you want me to write your jokes, I can do them for you. If, you're not if I want you it. to read my jokes. This guy's talking about my intelligence. <laughs> okay. Uh, God damn it. Embarrassing. Ms. Zigzag here with a question for Jake Paul. Your last fight, you sold the show with a second round knockout over Nate Robinson. What kind of improvements can fans expect to see in your game going into this fight? Zach, I pick wins. Young legend right there. Um, you know, lots of improvements. I'm a completely different fighter. Uh, the, the fighter that I am now would knock out the fighter in the Nate Robinson fight that is Jake Paul. So I'm, I'm, I'm completely different. And people will see I really haven't even gotten to show my boxing ability in my last two fights because they've both been like four minutes total or, five, or like seven minutes total. So, you know, 
uh, I'm actually excited to see if Ben's going to give me a, a little bit of a test, a little bit of a challenge, because then people will see, oh, shit, this kid can do that. Oh, he has this in his arsenal. Oh, he's been working on that. I haven't even shown the world what I could do. That's why, this is why this is fun, because I have the ace up my sleeve. And when you have the ace up your sleeve in life, uh, hey, it, I was wondering, your, your cheerleaders that you brought to uh, my room, like, do you pay them as coaches or groupies, or do you just give them like sloppy seconds and social media shout outs? Yeah, I give them t a ton of uh, dry over the pants hand jobs. Hmm. Maybe, maybe say your joke again and we can all remember to laugh. Say it one more time, we can just all laugh afterwards, just so you feel good about yourself. Say it one more time for us. Hmm. No? <laughs> do you have another question? Yeah. <laughs> Look at the cock on this guy. <laughs> Jake, you spoke about the improvements you make every single fight. What can you attribute those improvements to? Is it your work ethic, your training team? What can you attribute that to? Man, all, all of the above. We're, we're working so hard and uh, really just a true passion for the sport. I love what I'm doing, and I have such a chip on my shoulder. The whole world wants to see Jake Paul lose this fight, and that, I, I love that. I love that so much. And, yes, we have the best team. BJ Flores, Jacob Chavez, you know, Dika on the strength and conditioning, Carl, Jay Leon Love, uh, John Marinick, Marcos, like all, all, all of these guys, I'm probably forgetting names, uh, even down to Shadow, Lucas Mack, all, all of these guys, Ebok, all, we have the best team, Blue, Gus, Content, on down, best managers, best advisors, best lawyers, best trainers, best photographers, that, that's why I'm at where I'm at as a 24 year old is because I'm surrounded by greatness and look, we all have a lot to prove to the world and I'm 24 years old, this is, this is the biggest stage of my life, you know, Last event was the eighth biggest pay-per-view event in history. This one's going to be even bigger. Justin Bieber, Snoop Dogg, Doja Cat. Are you kidding me? And you, you think for one moment I'm going to sit there and fumble this? You think for one moment I'm not going to work my bloody balls off to beat this bum? This Walmart-looking head-ass Napoleon Dynamite motherfucker? No. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. So, yeah, I, I'm excited for this, and I have a trip on my shoulder, and proved, I'm going to prove to the world April 17th, trillerfightclub.com. Buy it now, but I'm gonna prove to the world that Jake Paul's the real deal, and that's and that's why I called out Conor McGregor initially. This is this is the road to McGregor at the end of the day. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go out to uh, virtual questions, uh, and let's go to that right now. From USA Today, we have Josh Peter. Jake, you referred to Dan as a million dollar bet. I just wonder how you felt about that. What were you neighbored about it? Have had a chance to talk to him? Uh, I think it's great. Um, Dana White doesn't talk about really anything besides the UFC, so it just goes to show how big of an event this is. And again, he is one of, uh, of the many bird brain people out there who don't understand that Jake Paul is, is a real fighter. And, uh, you know, <laughs> he, he's going to lose a million dollars. And uh, I, I challenged him along with Snoop Dogg to step it up and make it $2 million. Put your money where your mouth is. A million dollars isn't, isn't that much to Dana White. I am so confident in my abilities and you know it's free promo so thank you Dana what's next vir virtually next up is fan sided Jeremy Harigis question for Jake um, Jake considering Ben's combat sports background are you expecting a quantum leap in the level of competition that you face thus far no <laughs> Uh, I think he'll be easier to beat than Nate Robinson. You want to uh, question to Ben? Go ahead. I think we lost him. Uh, was there a question for Ben there? Or did we lose yes. that? Yes, uh, Ben, a uh, question for you. Uh, based on what you've seen of Jake in the ring so far, have you seen um, an amount of talent that, or that, that you consider him down to this box? Yeah, it's hard to say. His, his opponents were so bad that he could have pretty much done anything he wanted to and won the fight. So, uh, yeah, I think TBD. Next up is bad left hook, Michael Woods. You guys, question first for Jake. Jake. I was impressed with especially your power against Nate Robinson. It strikes me that maybe you you were a guy who was born with it. I saw you backing up and cracking the guy. Now, I don't know how that's going to work on Aspen, who is a seasoned fight professional, but it led me to be thinking, uh, how, 
how into this are you? Or do you have sort of a long-term plan? All right, I'm gonna do this a year, two years, five years. Are you now a boxing lifer? What's that, what's that end game? How long do you wanna do this and where do you wanna get to in boxing? Yeah, uh, great question. Definitely a boxing lifer. I'm addicted to this sport uh, and I will become the biggest prize fighter in, in boxing. Simple as that. And yeah, uh, thank you for the compliment. Have a ton of power. I uh, didn't really even get to utilize it against Nate. He, he went down and I only landed eight punches and he was knocked down three times, if that gives you any indication. And man, when I put those 10 ounce gloves on, those Grant gloves, shout out to Grant, best gloves in the game. Woo! I, I, I love to crack, baby. And I, you know what's crazy? I love to get hit too. So like, the, you know, I, I just love fighting in general. And again, this is, uh, this is the start of a burgeoning career, uh, a burgeoning amazing career. And I'm addicted to the sport. I love the sport. I want to bring more eyeballs to it. I love, I love everything to do with it. You know, I could see myself coaching my son one day. Someone's going to let you have kids. That was good. You got, you got, you got like two, two laughs, two laughs. Thank you. Next up is Cage Side Look, Press, Gabriel Gonzalez. Look at. Jake, Jake, uh, celebrity boxing isn't anything new, but certainly enjoy the moment. Hey, it's your dad calling in. It's, it's your dad calling in. Look. That dude's still alive? Man. He's still alive, bro. I'm about yeah, to take I him out. Hey, he's still alive. <laughs> don't worry. I'm going to finish okay, him off. Man. Yeah, don't worry. Tell him I like them flip-flops, man. <laughs> he, he said he likes your flip-flops. That's my guy, Masvidal, maker of Ben Askren. Jake Paul will be the finisher of Ben Askren. Does that bother you, by the way, that you got knocked out in five seconds? Nah, it happens. It doesn't bother you? Not really. It doesn't really happen, by the way. That's only happened once. You got a record. You, you literally have the record, yeah. I literally have the record, You, you yeah. hold the record. The record. Yeah. Five seconds. Yeah. This isn't, it doesn't, like, haunt you at all that, like, that's probably the most embarrassing Jake. fighter in UFC history. Jake, I know you have low self-esteem, but you yep. don't need to project it onto me. Is it this, so this clip doesn't bother you? I've always seen it, like, a million times. <laughs> doesn't bother me. Doesn't bother you? No. Are you sure? Sure. Uh, I'm do the same thing to you. Yeah, uh, I don't think you're allowed to throw knees in boxing, Jake. Well, they might knock you out. It's the same thing. Uh, okay. Good luck. Okay, once again, Gabriel Gonzalez. All right, let's get, uh, let's get another virtual question. Our first question is for Jake. Jake, celebrity boxing isn't anything new, but it's certainly enjoying the moment. What do you think it is about yourself that you've had so much success? Because let's be honest, not everybody brings in as much attention when they try to do this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a bit confused why, when people talk about celebrity boxing because there's no such thing as celebrity boxing. I'm the only celebrity that's boxing. So the, people like to write articles about it, and, but like I'm the only one that's doing it. So it doesn't, doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, this isn't celebrity boxing. I am a celebrity who is boxing, yes, but I'm, I'm, a, real, I'm a real fighter. I've shown that. I'm 3-0, three, three KOs, 2-0 as a professional with two KOs. Uh, but I'm the only celebrity or influencer that's fought in like the past two years, so I'm really the only one doing it. So, they the discounting Logan? Logan doesn't count or what? Uh, he, he hasn't fought in two years if you paid attention oh, so closely to what I was saying. And, and look, he, Logan's great. He's a celebrity who's boxing, but at the end of the day, again, Logan is a real fighter who, who would whoop on a lot, of, a lot of guys. Who's better, you or him in boxing? Me, hands down. That's why I'm three and zero, three KOs. He's zero, one and one. Yeah. He ever whoop your ass when you're the little brother? That, that was a question, Jake. You're supposed to. Respond. I, I don't. I just don't care about your questions. Okay. So I'll take that as he rubbed your face in the carpet on a weekly basis. Yeah, sure, Ben. Ha 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 on that note, we'll go for one more virtual, another virtual question. Yeah, my final question was just for Ben. Uh, ben, you've been in big fights before, UFC pay-per-views, won championships. How has the reception been 
for you for this fight, because I'm assuming you're getting messages from a whole other fan base. What is it like? Um, yeah, it's interesting. Like, like I said earlier, I didn't really, I knew of Jake and Logan when I took the fight, but I didn't know like a whole lot about uh, Logan or his little brother. And, um, you know, one of the things that I, I can't believe is in MMA, I was kind of the heel. I was kind of not liked that much. But, um, you know, Jake said in, in the pre-fight thing that it was 50 people wanted to win, 50 people wanted to lose. And I, I was shocked because it's got to be like 90-10. <laughs> Pretty amazing how many people don't like you. I, I, I actually kind of find it pretty impressive your ability to be disliked. That was a compliment. All righty. One more, another uh, virtual question on tap. From the courtside sound off podcast, I have Angel Ortega. Yes, I have one question for Jake, and I want to ask Jake. You started with Deji, and now you're with Ben, and you also had Nate. I want to ask you, are you at this point bigger than the JJ fight? Is there any interest in still fighting KSR, or have you outgrown him and you're just over that? Yeah, uh, definitely outgrown him. There's interest. Uh, I think that's a fight that everyone wants to see, but at this point, it just wouldn't even be close. And I think, you know, once he sees what I do to Ben, yeah, he's gonna, <laughs> he's not gonna want to fight. Uh, and yeah, like even his coaches say it. They're like, hey, we're not letting KSI fight this kid right now. So his coaches know. His coaches know what will happen. KSI is ducking. And at the end of the day, it's like there, there's a lot bigger fights out there than uh, the, the, than JJ. So. All right, next. And next we have from MMA Island, Dona Corby. Hey, you guys. This question is for Jake, and I guess it applies a bit to Ben as well. Jake, when you look at your three fights, uh, you were very fortunate when you fought Deji and when you fought Nate that the main event guys were, were willing to carry the slack with you because your opponents really weren't in terms of the promotion of the fight. They were very quiet. They weren't, you know, Deji doesn't be able to the mainstream appeal. Nate obviously opted to just be quiet and try to portray himself as not. We'll give, give the credit. He really did push that fight. Do you appreciate that Ben is willing to do the work to, to promote the fight, unlike maybe probably any of your opponents before? And Ben, are you enjoying that aspect of it? I, I, I do actually appreciate it. And I, 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 part of me likes Ben. A part of me, you know, thinks uh, he's funny. Look, I'll give him that. And uh, even even his his wife, like I, I was seeing her post stuff on Instagram. Like she's funny. Uh, so I, I give I give him credit. And yeah, I think this this fight has the most amount of hype going into it. Uh, he, you know, he actually is putting out content and, and, and making some noise and talking some shit. Uh, so yeah, I do give I do give credit to Ben there. And that's you know part of the reason we picked him is we knew there was going to be shit talk going into it. You know, one of the things I, pre I appreciated about him earlier, I said it, is that, uh, and, and you know his brother too, like, they have somehow convinced their fans that they're real fighters. It's, it's tremendous. It's, you know, it takes an act, it takes a show. He's done that. He says, pulling the fire truck, meeting rice and chicken and shit like that. Like, I'm in this for life. That's, that's tremendous. Appreciate that, Jake. Suck a dick. <laughs> one more. We have one more virtual question and that's going to wrap things up for us so go ahead from full reptile youtube james mystery hey guys i've got uh, a question for each athlete um jake what do you have to say to all the professional fighters out there that don't like your quick success in combat sports without any substantial previous experience uh, haters will be haters. You know, when there's a new young buck in the game coming up in roughly in feathers, they're, they're going to be upset. But again, I, I'm, I'm just trying to bring more eyeballs to the sport, and I'm having fun doing it, and I'm just doing me. You know, there's room for everyone to eat. Gary Vee once said, you know, you can build your skyscraper in New York as high as you want without tumbling over someone else's skyscraper. So wh why are people mad that I'm successful? You know, build up your own skyscraper, and there's room for everyone to eat in this sport, trust me. Fair enough. Um, ben, I saw on your Instagram the little scuffle between uh, you and Jake before the press conference. I was wondering if you can fill me in on that. And on a scale of 1 to 10, how intimidated were you when Jake came in <laughs> to lift that tissue under your shoulder? Uh, I think it was a mess, <laughs> not, not a tissue, but... Um, yeah, I would, I would say, you know, like a 1 to 1.1, 1 .1, somewhere in there. Uh, you know, again, if Jake and I met in an alley, I would just 
do a homicide if I wanted to, no big deal. Uh, I, I was most impressed um, by the fact that Jake, as a 24-year-old, is able to convince a whole team of grown men to do a cheer with them. That was, uh, that was tremendous. It's called, it's called a team, a family, something that you, you don't have. Seems like you don't have really friends and, you know, we're, we're all in this together and this means a lot to us. You know, this means a lot to everyone. This is a part of history. They're, everyone on my team is a part of history. And we're, we're a brotherhood and quite literally a bunch of 20 year olds taking over the world. You sound stupid. Yeah, I, I hope you do some more cheers on the way there. Well, we know, we know it's going to be serious on April uh, 17th. Go Bayside! We, we appreciate both of you being Two, here. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Ben, Ben, <laughs> Ben. God damn. There you go. Thank you both for being here. We're looking forward to April 17th. Should be a lot of fun. Thank you, Al. All right, you take care. Ben, Jake, we'll see you guys on April 17th. How many days? <laughs> 22! Now! 22! 22 till I end this motherfucker's career!